Thanks for tuning in to Psychology of the Unknown. If you're into true crime, creepypastas, the paranormal, and psychology, then you're in luck, because that's all we do here. So if that's what you're into, then put a noose around the necks of the subscribe and like buttons, and when the notification bell comes to check on them, kick the chair out from under their feet, and then burn a message into the floor with gasoline before you run away. Today, we're going to be telling you the story of James Holmes, the Aurora, Colorado shooter. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. James Holmes was born on December 13, 1987 in San Diego, California. He is one of two children of mathematician and scientist Robert Holmes and registered nurse Arlene with sister Chris. Holmes began to suffer from mental health issues in middle school and attempted suicide when he was 11. During this time, he suffered from visual and auditory hallucinations where he would hear what he referred to as nail ghosts, which he said would hammer on the walls at night. He would also see shadows and flickers out of the corner of his eyes, which he said fought each other with guns and other weapons. Holmes was the patient of psychiatrist Lynn Fenton, who said that he was obsessed with killing for over a decade. Holmes graduated high school in 2006 and completed his bachelor's degree at the University of California in 2010. After this, he planned on pursuing his graduate degree at the University of Colorado, which led to him moving to Aurora. His major was in health studies, where he planned to get his PhD, and he lived in an apartment with others in the same program. In 2011, he began dating a fellow biology classmate, and the relationship lasted two months. They resumed their relationship in January of 2012, but it ended again in February. At this time, he sought help from a student health clinic. His final diagnosis was schizoid personality disorder with schizophreniform disorder and autism spectrum disorder. After the breakup, his academic performance declined and Holmes began the process of withdrawing from the university. At one point, a psychiatrist at Student Mental Health Services considered placing him in the mental health hold involuntarily but decided against it, believing he was borderline and the commitment would inflame him. Investigators later found his apartment was virtually empty with a single Batman mask. Many reports from the media claimed that Holmes had an obsession with the comic book hero, but the district attorney discredited this, saying that there was no evidence to support it. The reason for the speculation was due to Holmes being reported as making himself up to look like the Joker before attacking a theater full of moviegoers on opening night for the film The Dark Knight Rises. In a later interview, the psychiatrist who interviewed Holmes stated the only reason he picked the film he did was simply because it was guaranteed to be full. The district attorney stated that Holmes chose the Century 16 theater because he liked theaters and that one had doors which he could lock in order to increase the number of casualties and that it was in the area with a longer police response time. He chose the midnight screening because he believed fewer children would be there and didn't want to kill them. He originally considered attacking an airport but decided against it because of security and didn't want to be considered an act of terrorism. He stated terrorism isn't the message. The message is there is no message. He considered using explosives, but rejected the idea because he thought it'd blow himself up, and even thought about becoming a serial killer, but reasoned that it was too personal, too much evidence. He'd be easily caught, and there would be so few kills. On May 22, 2012, he purchased a Glock 22 pistol, and six days later, a Remington 870 Express Tactical Shotgun. On June 7th, just a few hours after failing his oral exam, he bought a Smith & Wesson M&P 15 sport rifle, all of which were acquired legally with background checks, and since Holmes did not have a criminal record, he was able to buy them. He eventually acquired 3,000 rounds of ammo for the pistol, 3,000 for the Smith & Wesson, and 350 shells for the shotgun over the internet. He then placed an order for a Black Hawk Urban Assault Vest, two magazine holders, and a knife through an online retailer, as well as a spike strip, which he admitted he was planning to use in case police followed him. On July 19th, just a few hours before the shooting, Holmes mailed a notebook to a psychiatrist which detailed his thoughts and plans. It was found undelivered in the Anschutz Medical Campus mailroom. Right before the assault, he called the crisis hotline for mental health with hopes that someone would talk him out of it at the last minute, but the call was disconnected after nine seconds. 
He was arrested while standing next to his car immediately following the assault in the theater parking lot without resistance. According to reports, he entered the theater by purchasing a ticket to the movie and then sneaking out the exit door, which he propped open and returned with weapons and other gear. He then set off several gas and smoke canisters and then opened fire on the audience, killing 12 and wounding 70. Reports stated that he was initially calm and detached at the time of his arrest, but grew interested in watching the aftermath of the shooting. After his arrest, he told police that he had booby-trapped his apartment with explosives, which police later confirmed. His murder victims were 24-year-old Jonathan Blunk, 18-year-old Alexander Boyk, 29-year-old Jesse Childress, 51-year-old Gordon Cowden, 24-year-old Jessica Gawi, 27-year-old John Larimer, 27-year-old Matt McQuinn, 23-year-old Michaela Medic, 6-year-old Veronica Moser-Sullivan, 27-year-old Alex Sullivan, 24-year-old Alexander Teves, and 32-year-old Rebecca Wingo. On June 4th, 2013, the presiding judge accepted his plea of insanity, and on August 5th, he was transferred to the Colorado Mental Health Institute in Pueblo, Colorado. He was charged with 24 counts of first-degree murder, 140 counts of attempted first-degree murder, one count of possessing an illegal explosive device, and one sentence enhancement for a crime of violence. He received 12 life sentences in prison without the possibility of parole and an additional 3,318 years. He was also ordered to pay $955,000 in restitution to the victims and their families. In September of 2015, he was moved to Colorado State Pen. On October 8, 2015, he was assaulted by inmate Mark Daniels, who had been convicted of auto theft. He was then transferred to an undisclosed location out of state, but according to the FBI's website, he is being incarcerated at USP Allenwood in Pennsylvania. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Give us a like, leave a comment below, and please share the video with your family and friends. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psychology of the Unknown.